Have you ever thought about opening your own mobile card or kiosk business? Maybe the facility you manage could establish new revenue by adding coffee, food, or retail services. Cart King International can be the answer to your needs. Cart King is a North American designer and manufacturer of the finest mobile coffee, food, and retail carts and kiosks. Cart King has been working with clients and corporations across North America for 20 years, providing innovative designs, custom manufacturing, and timely delivery. Carts and kiosks are fun, and so are the dozens of designs on our website. Please visit us today at www.cart-king.com or just call us at 1-877-986-7771 and get your sales rolling. If you find yourself in need of legal representation, it can be a very stressful time in your life. In my career, I have dealt with thousands of lawyers, I have dealt with thousands of law firms, and I can confidently recommend to you Keith M. Davidson at kmdlaw.com. Available 24 hours, seven days a week. Just log into kmdlaw.com. That's kmdlaw.com. Or you can call toll-free 833-4-KMD-LAW. That's 833-4-KMD-LAW. Personal injury, wrongful death, STDs, sexual assault, car accidents. They handle it all efficiently and professionally. It doesn't matter how imposing the opposition may be. Because the team at KMDLaw.com are battle-tested and fierce. They will not stop until justice prevails. Go to KMDLaw.com or call toll-free 833-4KMDLaw. If you're in for the fight of your life, stop screwing around and contact KMDLaw. PureSoapFlakes.com, 218-568-2525. Have you ever heard of Castile Soap? Pure Soap Flake Company handcrafts fine soap bars, laundry powder, and concentrated soap flakes using organic vegetable oils from their northern Minnesota facility. Bathe your body and wash your clothes with pure soap products that are free of fragrance, GMOs, palm oil, sodium lauryl sulfate, and synthetic additives. Keep it clean, folks. Pure Soap Flake Company products are kind to living creatures and sensitive skin, safe for drains and waterways, and work great in high-efficiency washers and top- and front-loading machines. They have a little promotion going on. Contact them to order some soap. Mention the Opperman Report. You're going to get a free gift. They're going to send a little extra soap, travel size, soap bars, and laundry soap, cleaning soap flakes. I've been using that stuff all day long today. Great stuff. Order today at puresoapflakes.com or give them a call. 218-568-2525. 218-568-2525. Pure Soap Flake Company is a proud member of the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetic Guild. The Opperman Report is brought to you by Aquadam.net. You can give them a call at 707-764-2119. A flooded home is never easy to deal with. You're left with the mess to clean up, the insurance companies to deal with, and not to mention all the memories, the precious memories that are lost in the flood. You can never replace those. And Aquadam can be a tool in your arsenal to protect your home and property from the floodwaters. The coffer dam is filled with water to control water and is reusable as long as it's taken care of. It can protect your home or business from rising floodwaters like a dam, but without the beavers. It can also be used in construction. If you need an area to be dewatered, an aqua dam can do the job. An aqua dam was used at SeaWorld in Orlando for the Mako roller coaster ride during the coaster's construction by dewatering the work area. An aqua dam is now dewatering the work area at San Antonio SeaWorld for their newest roller coaster ride. An aqua dam has been used in many construction projects all around the U.S. and all around the world. Now give aqua dam a call, 707-764-2119. You can look them up online at aquadam.net. You can find them on Facebook at Aquadam Inc. And you call them up, you email them, you tell them Ed Opperman sent you, and they're going to take 10% off the price. Aquadam.net, 707-764-2119. It's the Opperman Report. Join digital forensic investigator and PI Ed Opperman for an in-depth discussion of conspiracy theories, strategy of new world order resistance, high-profile court cases in the news, and interviews with expert guests and authors on these topics and more. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, private investigator Ed Opperman. Uh, You can find me at Opperman Investigations and Digital Forensic Consulting through my website, emailrevealer.com, or you can just contact me at oppermaninvestigations at gmail.com. If you like our show, be sure and check out our Patreon. We put up uh, about eight hours of new content on Patreon each month, uh, Opperman Report Patreon. But our archives are always free. The stuff you hear every night on AMFM radio, you can find them for free at spreaker.com. You go there for free 
sign up. You get an email notification when we put up new content. And there's a chat room. And also, too, I put up a, a special live show every Friday night. You can only find there at Spreaker. Our guest today is JJ Mazzucotelli, okay? And you can find him on Twitter at JJ underscore M-A-Z-Z-U-C-O-T-E-L-L-I. Uh, he's a writer for the Reno Worker, and uh, he's written this incredible article about the cops up in Reno using militia guys as a, sort of like enforcers or, or, or help. Uh, he and his friend uh, Chris Torres. Chris Torres couldn't be here with us today. Maybe we'll get him on next time. JJ Mazzucatelli, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, JJ. Tell us about yourself. Who is JJ Mazzucatelli? Uh, I am a local photojournalist and historian out of Reno, Nevada. Um, with an, my expertise is in conflict and extremism. Um, and I've spent the last uh, couple months or so uh, creating a sort of news zine uh, blog sort of thing with my friend Chris to cover local extremism out of the northern Nevada area called the Reno Worker. Um, and our most recent article, like you said, The Cops, Private Enforcers, is about um, northern Nevada law enforcement agencies using uh, right-wing militias to sort of enforce um, enforce their sort of will on protesters without them actually having to get involved. Yeah, that, that sounds outrageous. Has this been reported anywhere else? Um, not that not that we could find, and the only really the only way we were even able to confirm it was because um, through the Electronic Frontier Foundation, which is another place where I work, um, we retrieved a email through a FOIA request that detailed. Uh, a, a local militia guy basically being allowed to patrol the perimeter of the Minden Tahoe airport and uh, arrest people and block entry to a um, to a parking lot and using that we were able to talk to some local activists we went and consulted with uh, people who had encountered these militia guys before encountered these uh, law enforcement agencies before and were able to sort of put together a story where we found that the specifically the Douglas County Sheriff's Department um, or Sheriff's Office was using far-right militias uh, whenever there were big events as essentially crowd control um, and that that includes Black Lives Matter rallies or um, in this specific case with the Minden Tahoe Airport a Donald Trump appearance Okay, and we keep calling him this local militia guy. Do we know what his name is? Uh, we don't know his name that was redacted uh, in the email. Um, and when I attempted to follow up with the, uh, with the Douglas County Sheriff's Office, and specifically with the person who's the member of the Sheriff's Office, Sheriff's Office who is named in the email, Ron uh, Elgis, when I attempted to follow up with them, they denied that the email existed at all and denied that there were any um, any other existing documents. And so I'm, I'm currently in the process of attempting to get them to hand over any other documents that may be relating to contact with militias, but um, right now they're claiming that uh, no such documents exist. And you mentioned before that this guy, this local militia guy again, uh, that he actually effected some arrests. Yeah, um, in the email, uh, let's see, it says, um, he, so a direct quote from the email is, he stated that they have spotted several individuals camping out and arrested a few subjects. Um, and then redacted is in communication with the Douglas Sheriff's Office. So basically it's saying that, like, he's working with the Douglas Sheriff's Office, they're in contact with him, and he's, uh... Um, out there arresting people um, by this airport and they, they've given them the green light to do this and what we found by talking to local activists um, from the Minden Douglas County area is that um, even though the Douglas County Sheriff publicly denies that they have any contact with these militias they would hold sort of uh, town town meetings or like like a little town square where they would inform residents and be like, hey, 
just so you know, we're going to be allowing militia guys um, to run crowd control on this upcoming event. And so even though they might deny it publicly to the press or to their the people that they work with, they're willing to discuss it with the members of the, their town who they know agree with them. Okay, because up there, this is like mostly white right-wing guys up there in, in Reno. In Douglas um, County. Reno itself, the city is a pretty, it's a pretty purple town. It's a pretty diverse town, um, both politically and just with the people who live here. But once you get into the rural areas, you're mostly seeing uh, white, far right uh, people. Yeah. Okay. Now the, the local militia guy, do we know what militias he belongs to? Um, we, again, because the personal details have been redacted in the email, we can't say for certain, but... Uh, we believe that they are either with the 3% or the Northern Nevada Lightfoot Militia because those are the two militias that the Sheriff's Office seems to have a relationship with. Now, I guess people are familiar with the the 3% and the 3 percenters. You know, it's a pretty well-known group. They were up there at Bundy Ranch. They were up there over at the, the Burns uh, uh, Preserve. Uh, but the other one is called the Northern Lights. What's it called? Northern Nevada Lightfoot. Northern Nevada Lightfoot. Now, uh, do they have any a reputation of being like a racist group, a right wing group, a white supremacist group? Um, they don't have the exact same reputation that uh, the three percenters have. Um, they're a much smaller group. They're mostly based in Northern Nevada and Oregon. Um, but they were uh, a lot of their members were also present at the Bundy standoff. They are very similar in practice to the three percenters group. Um, they're just a lot smaller. Now, okay, so we have these uh, unsworn uh, civilians armed up there affecting arrests. Uh, do we know if they're being compensated financially? Um, I don't believe so. Again, because the sheriff's office has refused to hand over any documents detailing their agreement with this group, uh, we can't say for certain. But it doesn't appear that they are being compensated in any way. Um, it appears that they are voluntary volunteering solely on a sort of political basis, um, a sort of like enforcing how they see the rule of law during Black Lives Matter rallies, during Donald Trump rallies, those sort of things. They, just, they have no training. They have no training in this to, to what laws are being violated to, to affect the rest. Uh, have you, has anybody up to any activists made complaints to the ACLU or some kind of civil rights organizations? Um, they haven't. Um, the I, I, I can I can say for the the local activists, a lot of them feel very isolated from the general sort of civil rights movement mm. um, because it because they're in such a rural area. Um, a lot of them at the last Black Lives Matter rally, uh, only about twenty people showed up, and there were a lot of complaints of feeling like they had been abandoned by the other sort of greater region. Mm. Um, and sort of left to fend for themselves. And so they, they they haven't reached out to a lot of these organizations because they feel like they've sort of been pushed out and um, they're kind of on their own. Now, when they showed up there and they had such a small group, the 20 guys, uh, was there violence? Was there intimidation? Oh, um, absolutely. There were roughly a thousand counter protesters to the 20 the 20 people who had showed up, um, a lot of those counter protesters were armed. Mm -hmm. um, while we were there, two women were, um, they were struck with a vehicle. Uh, they weren't seriously injured, then the, no one was hurt, but there were two women who were struck by a truck. Um, we were, Chris and I were both there reporting that day, and we were personally chased out of town, um, despite the fact that we're local to the region. Um, there were a number of armed militia guys, uh, some of whom identified with, like, as members of the Three Percenters or the Lightfoot Militia, and those were the guys who seemed to be providing crowd control, but there were also members, uh, like, local people who were dressed in sort of a militia fashion, mm -hmm. but didn't identify with any one militia, um, and were just sort of there to intimidate protesters, intimidate members of the press, um, and... What ended up happening was the Black Lives Matter rally ended up getting cut extremely short. They ended up um, moving and just leaving leaving the area, despite the fact that a lot of the people, a lot of those twenty people who were there, were local to the area. Um, the press, uh, myself included, left around with them. Um, 
because we were essentially being uh, pushed out of our like the designated free speech area by armed members of the local populace. Yeah, you can see some pictures in this article. This is a, uh, definitely a rough crowd here. Uh, and when, I forgot to mention too, you have a Patreon, right? Uh, I uh, the Reno Worker does. Uh, mm-hmm. The Reno Worker is our Chris and I sort of monthly uh, news zine where we cover local extremism and conflict. Yeah, so people can check out this article if you look up uh, JJ uh, Mazzucatelli, um, the Reno Worker. Uh, and then put in Patreon, it'll probably come up that way. Uh, what's it called? The article's called uh, uh, the, Co- the Cops, Private Enforcers. Now, I noticed, too, in the article, you mentioned the Proud Boys, the Boogaloo Boys. They were there, too, as well? Um, the, the bo- there, were, there was a Boogaloo presence. Um, the Proud Boys themselves, uh, we, I don't believe, were there. They do have a, they have a very small presence in Nevada itself. Right. Um, but uh, there were Boogaloo Boys there. Yeah, and Boogaloo boys were actually arrested in Las Vegas on their way to, to shoot up a, a Black Lives Matter uh, protest down there. And, you, and then they're, they're being um, used as militia up there up north. It just makes no sense at all. What about the local press? Anybody in the local press talking about this? Um, I believe – so the, the actual uh, Black Lives Matter rally in Minden was covered in, in the local press um, – the Sierra Nevada Ally did a re- did some really great coverage on it. We put out an article on it. Um, I believe this is Reno, which is another sort of local news group, uh, put out an article on it. So it got some coverage, but um, the we're the only local press that really focuses on extremism in our region. And so unless there's a big flare up like like something really violent happens or something like Minden happens, where a bunch of people were put in danger um groups like this don't get any coverage uh which in chris and i's opinion puts a lot of sort of is is very negligent on the part of uh a lot of journalists because you're you're ignoring the ways in which these groups are uh making connections with local law enforcement making like growing in size and so when violence actually does break out it seems to come out of nowhere when in reality they've been building up to it now, this local sheriff down there, is he up for election soon? Um, not, I believe he's up for election in 2022. Okay, because this would be a good issue yeah, to bring up. Re-elected. Yeah, this would be a good issue to bring up at his next election, this next debate. You know, this is pretty crazy stuff here, man. Yeah, I mean, he, and again, it's, um, it's one of those things where when we were there covering the, the, the protest, the reason that there was a Black Lives Matter protest in this rural Nevada region was because a local library had, um, had expressed not even direct support for Black Lives Matter, but had basically said, like, um, anyone who wants to come attend our library is welcome. We want to make a safe space for everybody. And the sheriff of Douglas County, Dan Coverly, um, responded to that in the press release, basically saying, um, if the if that library doesn't want to call the police because they don't um, because they support Black Lives Matter, uh, they don't need to. Basically saying like if the black if this uh, county library needs needs the sheriff's office, we won't be them there for them because they support Black Lives Matter. I remember um, that. That was a big story. He he actually said that we will that. not respond if they don't want. To, we're not going to get any help from this police department out there if they're going to be supporting Black Lives Matter. They, uh, just fascinating. Now, real quick though, let me yeah. ask this. Now, you mentioned that uh, uh, they were uh, patrolling the airport when Trump landed, right? So then, the Secret Service must be aware of this. Yes. The so the email that we got was actually from a FOIA request through the Secret Service. Gotcha. Um, so the we believe, even though the actual names and the like email addresses are redacted, um, it was a email between a local Secret Service, a Secret Service mem- officer, and the and Ron Elgis, the sort of representative of the uh, Douglas County Sheriff's Office. So it was a the FOIA request was actually through the Secret Service requesting communications about the Trump rally, which was on September twelfth. And through that FOIA request, we got this email, um, and then we followed up on that 
using that email, we followed up with the Douglas County Sheriff's Office in a separate FOIA request, um, attempting to get more documents so that we could build out the story, and they basically denied that this had ever happened. They denied that these documents existed, denied that this email existed, um, and currently we're following up uh, using using a service called Muckrock, um, yeah. which is a FOIA request service, uh, basically being like, we know you gave that you have these documents, we had some of them, you have legally have to provide them. Um, but Nevada, Nevada is really difficult because Nevada doesn't have a formal appeal process um so it's really difficult to get documents if a uh law enforcement agency doesn't want to hand them over have you tried uh, contacting the u.s secret service and, and requesting information about this um we we could but we would most likely just end up getting the same documents we already have yes. just because we've already filed those requests so we'd end up just getting the same documents, and what we're really looking for are internal documents within the Douglas County Sheriff's Office. But I mean, like even contacting um, the press office to see if they have a statement about this, a comment. Yeah, I mean that's that's definitely yeah. we're we're continuing to work on on follow ups. Um, so we're we're working on just attempting to get any sort of uh, documents we can, or any sort of answer we can, uh, detailing what what the relationship is between uh, the Douglas County Sheriff's Office and uh, law enforcement in Northern Nevada in general um, and these local militia groups because what we're what we don't want to see is that um, not only is that this is typical for Northern Nevada what we're what we're hoping is that Douglas County is sort of an outlier in Northern Nevada but there's a possibility that this is sort of standard procedure in Northern Nevada, and that, that presents a, a very dangerous uh, opportunity, if that makes sense. Yeah, I would encourage you to really follow this up. This is a, a huge story, you know, and, it's, and, and if you can really build it up, this could get national uh, coverage. Um, it's, how, did you, how did you get interested in all this stuff, uh, following these militias around and, and all these protests and stuff? What, what, what motivates you for that? So I started covering conflict just in general um, when I entered college. I entered college wanting to become a photojournalist, which is still sort of what I'm pursuing. Um, and I wanted to cover conflict because conflict photojournalism really appealed to me. And so what I ended up doing was driving up to Portland, Oregon, um, and sort of documenting um, the, the Proud Boys presence there and how they would sort of come into Portland and anti-fascist groups would come in and documenting those like routine, almost routine clashes. Um, and so that's where I started. And what, what ended up happening was I was covering that more and more. And I want to say sometime in 2018, um, like late 2018, um, I became interested in QAnon. And mm. I was like, this is something that that's developing. That's very very interesting i think it's something that could become very important in the next couple of years and so i started doing research on that and that sort of developed into a a very a relationship um that i a research relationship with sort of cult cultic extremism um which brought me into introduced me to militias introduced me to um lots of different far-right groups. So I got introduced basically through a relationship with wanting to study QAnon and how that sort of developed and documenting groups like the Proud Boys through photojournalism. And that brought me to militias, that brought me to local QAnon groups, um, that brought me to Christian identity in northern Nevada and covering all of those things. You know, by the way, you mentioned the Proud Boys. If people go to my Patreon, I actually have. I had an ex-Proud Boy on the show, and we have their manifesto and their initiation documents. <laughs> it says all over, top secret. You know, if you're not a member, you have to leave right now. But we have all those documents up on our uh, Patreon at uh, OppermanReport.com. People can check it out. Now, you mentioned QAnon a few times. What'd you discover? First of all, why don't you describe uh, what QAnon is and, uh, and, and what you find out about them? So... I would describe QAnon as a nationalistic cult um, that has developed on the internet in the last three years um, and has sort of 
created a life on the phone um, and really, really developed into a a political uh, force and a really, really dangerous force. Um, QAnon, in, in sort of its barest forms, is this is essentially a conspiracy theory, uh, a New World Order conspiracy theory. It's this idea that there are uh, elites who run um, the country and they, you know, make they control the press, they control the media, um, and they, they control everything. Um, and basically, what they they claim is that their Donald Trump has been sent, uh, was was elected, and is going to try and defeat. Um, the this new world order, which they refer to as the deep state, um, and Q is a military intelligence operative or military intelligence team who is assisting Donald Trump in this and is uh, sort of providing contact between the American people and Donald Trump. And that's sort of the bare bones of it. Um, in actuality, what it really turns out to be is it is a a very uh, cultic group where you've got these people who really should be treated less as a lot of times they're treated in media or by like people in social media as crazy people mm. really should be treated more like like cult victims um, because to them Donald Trump has taken almost a messianic form where he's delivering America he's supposed to save America and Q this person online in like forum groups is sort of their their profit he's their go-between um, and it's become really dangerous because uh, unlike a conspiracy theory where you can have a discussion around it and maybe it's political, but it's not actually dangerous, because this has developed into an almost religious-like belief system, um, there are people who are willing to devote their entire lives to this. And there's a, there's a possibility people are willing to commit like extreme violence in the name of this uh, this belief system um and we've already seen i think there there have been a couple of murders related to this there have been a couple of child kidnappings in relation to this belief system and there is sort of in the 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 research community surrounding this group um this sort of extremism research community there is a worry that as the january 20th date approaches when joe biden will be sworn as president um the believers in the QAnon belief system will become more and more violent because they believe because they believe that they're um, basically they they believe that their messiah is being taken away, um, and so we have this really dangerous belief system going on now where these people are essentially cult victims and they think that their cult leader is being stolen, and so there's this worry that uh, they will strike out in violence and that that could be really, really dangerous for the American people. Yeah, they do view themselves as patriots, you know, and, you know, uh, well-meaning people, I guess, on the one hand. Uh, they, they believe they're patriots, and they believe they believe in the Constitution, but then at the same time, they want to su- suspend all civil rights and round people up, send them to get mother, this crazy talk about uh, um, sealed indictments and stuff. Uh, and it's spilled over now, because here we have, you know, General Flynn, was the former national security director for the White House. This guy was had a cabinet position. And his attorney is a Sidney Powell woman who supports all this QAnon stuff. She has QAnon stuff all over her Twitter page. And uh, General Flynn is openly right now calling for a, a suspension of the, of the Constitution. Uh, Marshall Law is calling for uh, Incredibly yeah, uh, bizarre times. Yeah, General Flynn himself has... There, there's a... Uh there's a, a swearing in that q and right. uh, will do and he put out a video a couple of months ago of him and his, of him swearing in his family um, on the 4th of July using this uh, it's the like the, the the swearing in of a digital soldier I think is what it's called I don't have the exact terminology right in front of me huh. but he, he swore in his family and himself in this q swearing in process um essentially like devoting themselves to to QAnon um and he's like you said he's the former uh national security director he was the head of the uh DIA he's he's ostensibly a very important person in uh the U.S. defense community and he is a full believer or at least 
believes enough in it to be willing to take advantage of it or, um, for his own personal gain. He's linking himself to it. You know, I, I can't believe anybody at that level of power would believe it, you know, because it's just so ridiculous. But he's definitely linking himself to it and, and motivating that crowd. I forgot what I was going to ask you. <laughs> just so, so let's bump you a good time to take a commercial break, okay? Because uh, right. it's just a terrifying time in our country. And I, 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 you sound like a young man. You know, I'm 58 years old, and uh, I'm just seeing things out there just so um, stressful and so uh, un. Hinging, un- unnerving of what's going on in our country here. We got with us today uh, J.J. Mazzucatelli, and uh, he's a writer for the, the Reno Worker. Uh, he's got his own Patreon for the Reno Worker. Check that out. That's how you get these full articles, really good stuff on here. There's a lot of good stuff on here about the, uh, that we haven't talked about yet. Uh, so we'll be right back with more of uh, J.J. Mazzucatelli after these messages. And now a word from our sponsors. If you find yourself in need of legal representation, it can be a very stressful time in your life. In my career, I have dealt with thousands of lawyers, I've dealt with thousands of law firms, and I can confidently recommend to you Keith M. Davidson at kmdlaw.com. Available 24 hours, seven days a week, just log into kmdlaw.com, that's kmdlaw.com, or you can call toll-free 833-4-KMD-LAW, that's 833-4-KMD-LAW personal injury, wrongful death, STDs, sexual assault, car accidents. They handle it all efficiently and professionally. It doesn't matter how imposing the opposition may be because the team at kmdlaw.com are battle-tested and fierce. They will not stop until justice prevails. Go to kmdlaw.com or call toll-free 833-4KMD-LAW. If you're in for the fight of your life, stop screwing around and contact KMD Law. Are you ready to change your life? But don't know how to start? Is your stress and worries keeping you awake at night? Have you been battling grief, anxiety, or depression all alone? Have you lost touch with your own sense of being or spirituality? Soul Free Therapies offers professional and affordable live video streaming counseling and coaching services from the comfort of your own home. Sessions offered in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Go to our website at www.soul-free.com and book your first session today. The Opperman Report is brought to you by Aquadam.net. You can give them a call at 707-764-2119. A flooded home is never easy to deal with. You're left with the mess to clean up, the insurance companies to deal with, and not to mention all the memories, the precious memories that are lost in the flood. You can never replace those. And Aquadam can be a tool in your arsenal to protect your home and property from the floodwaters. The coffer dam is filled with water to control water and is reusable as long as it's taken care of. It can protect your home or business from rising floodwaters like a dam, but without the beavers. It can also be used in construction. If you need an area to be dewatered, an aqua dam can do the job. An aqua dam was used at SeaWorld in Orlando for the Mako roller coaster ride during the coaster's construction by dewatering the work area. An aqua dam is now dewatering the work area at San Antonio SeaWorld for their newest roller coaster ride. An aqua dam has been used in many construction projects all around the U.S. and all around the world. Now give aqua dam a call, 707-764-2119. You can look them up online at aquadam.net. You can find them on Facebook at Aquadam Inc. You call them up, you email them, you tell them Ed Opperman sent you, and they're going to take 10% off the price. Aquadam.net, 707-764-2119. PureSoapFlakes.com, 218-568-2525. Have you ever heard of Castile Soap? Pure Soap Flake Company handcrafts fine soap bars, laundry powder, and concentrated soap flakes using organic vegetable oils from their northern Minnesota facility. Bathe your body and wash your clothes with pure soap products that are free of fragrance, GMOs, palm oil, sodium lauryl sulfate, and synthetic additives. Keep it clean, folks. Pure Soap Flake Company products are kind to living creatures and sensitive skin, safe for drains and waterways, and work great in high-efficiency washers and top- and front-loading machines. They have a little promotion going on. Contact them to order some soap. Mention the Opperman Report. You're going to get a free gift. They're going to send a little extra soap, travel size, soap bars, and laundry soap, cleaning soap flakes. I've been using that stuff all day long today. Great stuff. Order today at puresoapflakes.com or give them a call. 218-568-2525. 218-568-2525. Pure Soap Flake Company is a proud member of the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetic Guild. 
It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is Investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome back to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, Private Investigator Ed Opperman. Hey, don't forget, by the way, I keep forgetting, uh, Silk City Hot Sauce. Check out SilkCityHotSauce.com. If you buy some hot sauce on there and use promo code Ed, E-D, uh, you'll get a free bottle of hot sauce and 15% off of your order. Uh, so be sure and do that because that, that, we got a commission on that. So that's one of those promo code ads that we got a commission for, uh, Silk City Hot Sauce. And it's supposed to be really good stuff, too. Uh, we're here today with J.J. Mazzucatelli. You could find him on Twitter at the J.J. underscore Mazzucatelli. Uh, he's with the Reno Worker that you can find on his Patreon on, on the Reno Worker. Uh, and we're talking about the, how these militias up there in Reno are working hand in hand with the cops. Right wing militias are working with the cops, effecting arrests, working security during a, a Donald Trump appearance uh, up there in Reno at the airport. Just fascinating. This is Pulitzer Prize territory work. If you can get some uh, attention to this here, but JJ, when we, when we left, we were talking about um, uh, QAnon, right? Uh, are you familiar with that story that just came out this week? It's completely insane. This retired three-star general who's claiming that, that they traced the votes to Frankfurt, Germany, and the CIA, and Trump sent the Department of Defense over there, and they got into a firefight with the CIA that was guarding these servers. Are you familiar with that story? I'm, I'm I'm somewhat familiar with it. Um, if if I recall, I, I I think I saw something about it, read a little bit about it, and pretty much dismissed it out of hand because I believe it was General Michael Flynn who was sort of the source for that story, and he's not the most credible uh, when it comes to sources. He's a pretty devout uh, QAnon, at least promoter, if not follower. Yeah. Um, well, well, it seems- it's General General Thomas uh, McClearney. Was a, th- a former three-star. Okay. Ge- he's a real three-star general. But I know. I think Flynn did come out in support of this crazy story. And this guy actually just recently uh, testified at um, one of these uh, state hearings uh, on the election stuff, and, and he swore under oath. He says, "Yeah, we have hackers who trace this down." It's just we are living in a twilight zone, man. Yeah, there. It, it, it seems to be. That's right. I, I remember now. I, I, I saw it connected to General Flynn, but I, that's right. He wasn't the general. Um, the 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 general zeitgeist around particularly this election but um just in general these last couple of years uh has been one with just a complete rejection of i think uh facts yeah. and and sort of a ob- objective reality um it, it's when we the the american public has sort of decided that, that we'd rather live in a, a subjective reality than an objective one, which means it, it's almost impossible nowadays to 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 figure out what's what's real. Um, and so we have people claiming that uh, that you know the the vote was hacked from Germany and that there was a CIA firefight, and it's almost impossible to tell whether that's true or not because. The, the people who are behind it, um, the sources who are behind it, might be politically motivated in why they're disclosing these things. They might be just lying in an attempt to get more people on their side. It's it's incredibly difficult. Yeah, it, it really is. It's it's, it's amazing. Um, and what, what crazy times we're living. It's almost like a like in the ancient uh, times when because uh, there's so much rumor and gossip going back and forth and. and uh, it's a superstition, you know. That uh, in the ancient times, they thought, well, if you throw a virgin into the volcano, it'll stop. <laughs> it'll stop the storms. Yeah. Or it's almost what we're getting to now, man. It's just fascinating how uh, your total rejection of reality, like you said. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, it's it, it's it's one of those things where um, I I do my best when when writing a story. This is sort of my my personal policy where uh, if if I can't personally attest to what's being said in the story if i can't like say i was there i saw this i i don't want to write about it because it, it's become so difficult to find sources who are who are trustworthy like like for instance going back to the the malicious story that we were talking about earlier we had sources in early august telling us that um uh telling us that uh people were were working we're working with the uh, with the police doing these things, um, and 
uh, but we, we didn't want to report that and confirm that because um, there was a no, there because we, we couldn't personally confirm it. We couldn't actually go out and see it. Yeah, I hear you. You know, and there's so many people out there nowadays with podcasts, they call themselves a journalist, and they come up and just repeating, or YouTubers, you know, just repeating the same old uh, hokey stuff over and over again. When there's enough really good, interesting stories that are real that you can report on, you know, uh, that they, there's no need to really go out there and all this crazy exaggeration stuff. I'm looking at your, your blog here. One of the um, stories on here is a look at the Reno police surveillance equipment. Now, my first question is, why would the, if the opposition up there, if the left is so small, uh, why would they need any surveillance equipment? Well, I think part of it is, the part of the surveillance equipment is just general body cameras, um, general like use of body, body one cameras, uh, automated license plate readers, stuff right. like that. Um, but there's also this sort of, there's there's a in the last couple of years there's, there's been this push to use um in, in my opinion the most the most important part of that article was the amazon ring where it's, it's this amazon like camera that I, i'm sure you've seen ads for sure that you can hook up to your your front door and like when someone rings your doorbell it turns on or like when someone walks up to your front door it turns on so it can videotape them um and what's happened is the the police have now gotten access to these these cameras um so they can use your amazon ring as a surveillance camera um and they have access to it and they can they can look through it um and that what they what that means is nationwide uh the police have a surveillance net almost where if there's a city with a large concentration or even just a neighborhood with a large concentration of these amazon rings rings they basically have security cameras in that neighborhood at every house mm. and so they can look and see like who's been coming to this house who's been like coming through here and so you have a um almost private use so you've got this private company amazon selling security cameras to consumers which the police have access to yeah, that's really incredible, too. Yeah, and another one, too, is the Ancestry.com. People send their DNA in there, and then uh, the police have access to that, too, as well. They sell to the cops. And even Facebook, you know, um, we put all, all our data in there, and then uh, these databases become available. They sell our information. Uh, some of the most uh, – I'm a private investigator, so I know how, much, how valuable this type of information is. And just imagine if you have a, a database of all my enemies, everybody who I've blocked and unfriended, you know, because those are the people you want to talk to when you're investigating people. So another uh, frightening future, you know. Uh, yep. I don't know, man. <laughs> it's kind of a depressing shot to maintain it, shit. No. What else are you working on over there at the Arena Worker? So our, our main focuses are usually um, – activity um, and uh, militia activity protests and uh, QAnon so we, we try and focus on like little sex like like little uh, chapters of, of extremism in the northern Nevada area um, right now we're, we're sort of collecting information on uh, QAnon in northern Nevada's response to the election results um, but we're, we're wanting to wait until uh, probably maybe mid-January, maybe even February, to start putting that article out because we want to put out a complete story. We don't want to say, like, well, Joe Biden won the election. That's how they responded, but we don't know how they'll feel in two months when he's sworn in. We want to wait until we have that full story and put it out all together. Um, and so that's, that's a sort of what we're working on right now, but that's sort of a longer-term story. And when you investigating QAnon, is this all online, or do you meet with local QAnon protests and organizations stuff like that? You see them all over the place, right? Um, it's it's definitely a mix. There's uh, there's somewhat regular QAnon rallies that um, that you that we can attend and that we we've attended before. But generally, um, the QAnon groups tend to live mostly online, and yeah. so it's the easiest way to so to get a read on what's going on is to find local Facebook groups that discuss that um, 
or local we'll go on parlor and follow people on parlor that are local um qanon supporters and sort of get a read on what they're saying what they're putting out um and if we can find a local like rally or local meeting up point we'll go and and focus on that and and have you uh, been following the different theories of, of who, who Q really is? A lot of people think it's the owner of 4chan. I think he calls himself Coder Monkey on Twitter. Code Monkey? Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I, I, uh, I think uh, Jim Watkins is – the the owner of Acoon is kind of the, the prevailing theory. Um, Jim or his son, Ron right. Watkins. Um, the, that seems to be sort of the prevailing theory, and I think there's a lot of a lot of credit to that. But I think also, um, I think the most the most plausible uh, theory seems to be that it started off as you know one or two people essentially as a joke, because the the idea behind QAnon that there's like a government insider who's like leaking information out isn't it, it's not a unique one. This is sort of something that's been happening on internet forums for a long time now. And so there's this sort of idea uh, that it started off basically as that, as like someone doing it as kind of a one-off uh, joke kind of thing, kind of trying to prank some people. And then it really caught steam and ended up being hijacked by the uh, owners of uh, HM, uh, Jim and Ron Watkins. And they're sort of the people behind it now. Um, and that makes sense. I think, I think there's a lot of plausi- I think there's a lot of possibility behind that. Um, but I, I, I'm one of those people who doesn't want to say this is absolutely who who's behind it unless I know for sure. Yeah, gotcha. Um, and, and it does make sense too because just think, he, he can put out the clues because people don't understand. Q just writes these weird fortune cookie type clues and then a whole bunch of people come in and decode them. So if you know what the clues are, if you're making up the clues, you can also have some socket uh, puppet accounts to decode them as well. <laughs> you know what I mean? To go out yep. there and uh, orchestrate the whole thing and have people say, oh, this is so convincing. This is so... Yep. Uh, yeah. And, and the, the big... The, the prevailing sort of reason a lot of people think it's uh, Jim or Ron Watkins is because there was, I want to say sometime in, in late 2018, maybe early 2019, I don't remember exactly. Um, there was, on, on HN, there was this, this moment when um, the, the Q account that was putting up the Q posts um, was like, hey, my account got hacked. Right. Um, can Ron Watkins confirm that this is actually me? Ron Watt, and then Rod Watkins' account comes in and is like, "Yes, that's this is actually." Yeah, I think I'll, did I lose you? I think this time it's on your end. Let me see. Yep, I'm I'm working fine. Oh, you're you back? Hello. Hey, JJ, what's up? All right, so we have JJ Mazzucatelli. He's back. We've been having a lot of technical and audio problems today. It's been really a uh, uh, more than usual. But JJ, when we got cut off, you were saying about how uh, uh, Q had claimed that he was hacked and his account was compromised. And he talks all this kind of military lingo code too, right? And in the beginning, he says, well, I have to talk about, I have to talk in clues and in code because if I don't, the spy bots will catch me and I'll, they'll track me down within minutes. But he's been doing it now for right. it's on the news now. <laughs> it's no excuse anymore. But you said that, that Watkins came on and confirmed it was the real Q, right? Yeah, that's sort of what what happened was um, Q basically went on one day and was like, "Hey, in in military lingo, yeah. or I guess it, it, it's more like the idea of what someone thinks military lingo sounds like. It it's not really doesn't really resemble, I think, any, the way anyone actually talks, but sort of resembles what you might think military lingo is from watching like a spy movie." Um, and goes on and says, "Hey, my account was hacked. Um, can uh, Ron Watkins?" Um, come on and confirm that this is actually me. And then Ron Watkins comes on and is like, yep, this is Q, we're all good. Um, and what the sort of prevailing theory is, is that Ron Watkins made an account, was like, hey, this is Q, my account got hacked, can Ron Watkins confirm me? Mm. And Ron Watkins came in and confirmed uh, himself as Q. And that that seems to, I mean, that makes no sense to me, that seems to make the most sense to everyone else who tries to keep up with this. Um, I, I can't say for certain that that's what happened, but that does seem to make the most sense, especially when you look at like the fact that um, 
the QAnon sort of populace is one of the main drivers for the business of 8chan or 8kun now. Like that website's main uh, group is um, made up of Q followers. And so it makes sense that the people who own that website would want to be able to control Q and control uh, the way in which people are interacting with their website. Yeah, there was a, even a, a blind item on Crazy Days and Crazy Nights by uh, Anti Lawyer, uh, did you, where he said uh, that uh, there was an offer on the dark web to sell the password to Q for $1 million. Do you see that? I did. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, that ended up uh, being fake. And oh, really? a lot of, uh, I believe so. There was a. I remember when that came up, and a lot of people. It, it was during this sort of. There were, there were a couple of days where directly after the election, um, Q hadn't posted for a while, and a lot of Q followers were starting to freak out, and then this posting came up on, on the dark web that was like, buy, you can buy this very popular account on Acoon for a million dollars. And shortly after that, Q started posting again, and so there was a sort of idea of like, what if the account got bought um, right after the election because the people who were running it uh, didn't see a profit in it anymore. Um, but I think since then, if it, if you look at the way that Q's been posting, what what they've been saying, that sort of thing, it doesn't really seem to make a lot of sense uh, for it to be a different person. It sounds like the same person. The language is the same. Um, and so it could be, it's entirely possible that it was sold for a million dollars and it got bought, but it would make more sense, I think, for that to essentially have been a fake and for someone to have uh, mm. tried to trick someone into thinking they bought the Q account. When in in reality, people uh, who have the Q account are still holding on to it because there's a lot of money behind it. There's a lot of money that you can make um, by running the website that hosts Q. There's a lot of money you can make by selling QAnon merchandise. Um, there's a guy in the early days of QAnon who wrote a book about QAnon and crowdfunded it and made six figures crowdfunding in this book about QAnon. Like he was a Q follower and wanted to write like a, a history of Q um, and he made six figures writing this, this book um, and so I think that there's a lot of money and I, uh, tied up in owning this account and making sure you have this account and so I don't think that they would sell it for a million yeah, early, just early on, track. yeah, Jerome Corsi was the Q whisperer, he was decoding Q <laughs> and he was charging on live yeah. stream and then Q came out you know what, bro? We're out of time, man. I really enjoyed this, though. JJ Mazzucatelli. JJ, what do you want to leave us with? Um, I would say uh, the most the most important thing right now is always making sure. I, I think when when you want to report the facts, when you want to tell people what's going on, make like double, triple checking every time. And if it's if it's from personal experience, that makes it all the better. But always double and triple check whenever you want to report anything. Um, no matter what it is, because you never know uh, where uh, the origin of a story is. And it's always good to double and triple check your facts. Yeah, and please check out the Reno Worker at uh, JJ and Chris's uh, um, Patreon. And, and this story, the cops, private enforcers, this is really a big deal, okay? For the cops to be uh, using uh, unsworn, uh, no, unnamed uh, you know, a militia men to be providing security, especially for the President of the United States of America. It's a huge, huge story. So keep an eye on this. Uh, you're doing some excellent reporting there, JJ. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Good night. And now a word from our sponsors. OppermanReport.com Hey, do you like what you're hearing? Do you like the work that you see us doing here at Opperman Report? You can support that work by becoming a member at OppermanReport.com. And as you have access to over 200 exclusive shows and interviews that you can't find on YouTube or Spreaker or iHeart or iTunes or KYAH, you can't find them anywhere else online, exclusive to our member sections, to our members. Also, too, there's images, videos, documents, court docs. And don't forget, you can hear your ad played here on the Opera and Report, reach hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people on a daily basis because the show is repeated every day all over the world. Contact me at operandreport at gmail.com and I'll give you a good deal on on advertising rates. Have you ever thought about opening your own mobile card or kiosk business? Maybe the facility you manage could establish new revenue by adding coffee, food, or retail services. 
Kart King International can be the answer to your needs. Kart King is a North American designer and manufacturer of the finest mobile coffee, food, and retail carts and kiosks. Kart King has been working with clients and corporations across North America for 20 years, providing innovative designs, custom manufacturing, and timely delivery. Carts and kiosks are fun, and so are the dozens of designs on our website. Please visit us today at www.cart-king.com or just call us at 1-877-986-7771 and get your sales rolling. The Opperman Report is brought to you by Aquadam.net. You can give them a call at 707-764-2119. A flooded home is never easy to deal with. You're left with the mess to clean up, the insurance companies to deal with, and not to mention all the memories, the precious memories that are lost in the flood. You can never replace those. And Aquadam can be a tool in your arsenal to protect your home and property from the floodwaters. The coffer dam is filled with water to control water and is reusable as long as it's taken care of. It can protect your home or business from rising floodwaters like a dam, but without the beavers. It can also be used in construction. If you need an area to be dewatered, an aqua dam can do the job. An aqua dam was used at SeaWorld in Orlando for the Mako roller coaster ride during the coaster's construction by dewatering the work area. An aqua dam is now dewatering the work area at San Antonio SeaWorld for their newest roller coaster ride. An aqua dam has been used in many construction projects all around the U.S. and all around the world. Now give aqua dam a call, 707-764-2119. You can look them up online at aquadam.net. You can find them on Facebook at Aquadam Inc. You call them up, you email them, you tell them Ed Opperman sent you, and they're going to take 10% off the price. Aquadam.net, 707-764-2119. Are you ready to change your life but don't know how to start? Is your stress and worries keeping you awake at night? Have you been battling grief, anxiety, or depression all alone? Have you lost touch with your own sense of being or spirituality? Soul Free Therapies offers professional and affordable live video streaming counseling and coaching services from the comfort of your own home. Sessions offered in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Go to our website at www.soul-free.com and book your first session today. If you find yourself in need of legal representation, it can be a very stressful time in your life. In my career, I have dealt with thousands of lawyers, I have dealt with thousands of law firms, and I can confidently recommend to you Keith M. Davidson at kmdlaw.com. Available 24 hours, 7 days a week, just log into kmdlaw.com, that's kmdlaw.com, or you can call toll-free 833-4-KMD-LAW, that's 833-4-KMD-LAW personal injury, wrongful death, STDs, sexual assault, car accidents. They handle it all efficiently and professionally. It doesn't matter how imposing the opposition may be because the team at kmdlaw.com are battle-tested and fierce. They will not stop until justice prevails. Go to kmdlaw.com or call toll-free 833-4KMD-LAW. If you're in for the fight of your life, stop screwing around and contact kmdlaw. puresoapflakes.com 218-568-2525. Have you ever heard of Castile Soap? Pure Soap Flake Company handcrafts fine soap bars, laundry powder, and concentrated soap flakes using organic vegetable oils from their northern Minnesota facility. Bathe your body and wash your clothes with pure soap products that are free of fragrance, GMOs, palm oil, sodium lauryl sulfate, and synthetic additives. Keep it clean, folks. Pure Soap Flake Company products are kind to living creatures and sensitive skin, safe for drains and waterways, and work great in high-efficiency washers and top- and front-loading machines. They have a little promotion going on. Contact them to order some soap. Mention the Opperman Report. You're going to get a free gift. They're going to send a little extra soap, travel size, soap bars, and laundry soap, cleaning soap flakes. I've been using that stuff all day long to make great stuff. Order today at puresoapflakes.com or give them a call, 218-568-2525. 218 568 2525. Pure Soap Flight Company is a proud member of the handcrafted soap and cosmetic guild. 